This workshop has been constructed to be extensively hands-on and the overwhelming majority of your time will be spent working with the tools and writing code. If you don't already have some experience with embedded microcontrollers and using the C programming language, you need to acquire that experience before proceeding. There are many resources online that you can use to obtain that knowledge. In case you didn't know it already, this workshop is available at the link shown at the bottom of the slide. That wiki site has links to all of the material you'll need to run this workshop. Chapter 1 is an introduction to TI's Tiva C-Series Cortex M4F microcontroller and its peripherals and tools. You'll examine the architecture and features of the device and the design of the Launchpad board. TI's embedded processing portfolio is exceptionally wide. From the 16-bit ultra-low power MSP430 microcontrollers on the left side of the screen to multi-core C6000 DSPs and high-end Cortex A15 devices on the right. In the middle are our 32-bit real-time C2000 processors. These parts are extensively used in motor control, digital power, lighting, and renewable energy. Hercules parts are 32-bit ARM Cortex R4F devices configured specifically for safety, transportation, industrial, and medical uses. Satara parts are 32-bit ARM Cortex A8 and A9 processors with speeds to 1.35 GHz. These parts see use in consumer, industrial, connected home, point of sale, smart grid, and medical applications. These parts are capable of running high-end operating systems. C5000 and C6000 processors are available as single-core DSPs. These devices often embed in consumer electronics and industrial applications. Today, we'll be looking at the Tiva C-Series devices. These ARM Cortex M4F devices include serial connectivity and measurement peripherals. They're extensively used in home automation, building automation, and industrial applications. Tiva C-Series microcontrollers have a wide range of peripherals and capabilities. In the figure on the left-hand side, we can see the ARM Cortex M4F core, which supports JTAG access as well as serial wire debug for testability. Within the M4F is the NVIC, or Nested Vectored Interrupt Controller, the MPU, or Memory Protection Unit, and the FPU, or Floating Point Unit. ETM is the Embedded Trace Macrocell for extended testing on the device. The TM4C123H6PM device has 256K of flash, 32K of SRAM, 2K of EEPROM, and an onboard ROM. I'll talk about the ROM contents in a moment. On the analog side, there is a low dropout voltage regulator for regulating the CPU voltage on the device and three analog comparators. There are two one mega sample per second 12-bit analog to digital converters. 24 input channels are connected through 12 shared inputs on this device and there is an onboard temperature sensor. On the lower left are the serial interfaces. As many as 8 UARTs, 4 SSI or SPI ports, a USB host device and on-the-go port, 2 CAN ports, and as many as 6 I2C ports. In each case I said as many as because most of the 64 pins on this device are heavily multiplexed and the number of peripherals that reach the pins will be determined by your decisions with regard to that multiplexing. In the lower middle are the motion control modules. These modules provide 16 PWM outputs with dead band generation for H-bridge circuitry protection. Two quadrature encoder inputs are included. On the lower right are the clocks, reset, and system control. The clock tree is very flexible on these devices. Below that is the SysTick timer, which can be used as a general purpose timer or as the heartbeat timer for an operating system. Below that are the 12 general purpose timers. 
These can be configured for PWM or capture and compare purposes. They can also be flexibly set up as 16, 32, or 64-bit timers. There are two watchdog timers, each on a separate clock source. As many as 43 general purpose I.O. and 32 channels of DMA. There is a external precision oscillator requiring no external components and a hibernate module that includes a real-time clock and battery-backed SRAM. These parts have power consumption as low as 370 microamps per megahertz, 500 microseconds wake up from low power modes, and real-time clock currents as low as 1.7 microamps. Power control is provided for both internal and external circuitry. Tiva C-Series devices are built with a 32-bit ARM Cortex M4 core. This core runs the Thumb2 instruction set. This instruction set uses both 16 and 32-bit instructions. It uses 26% less memory and is 25% faster than pure 32-bit code. With a clock frequency of up to 80 MHz, the core delivers 100 dry stone MIPS at 80 MHz. The part has a very flexible clocking system with an internal precision oscillator, an external main oscillator with phase lock loop support, an internal low frequency oscillator, and a real-time clock through the hibernation module. For signal processing applications, the core implements saturated math instructions. Read, modify, write operations are atomic and use the bit banding technique that we'll cover later. There is a single cycle multiply and a hardware divider. Data access is unaligned for more efficient memory usage. The single precision floating point unit is IEEE 754 compliant. JTAG and serial wire debugger access is provided. There are four different kinds of memory on this device. The 256K flash memory is single cycle to 40 megahertz. A prefetch buffer and speculative branching improves performance above 40 megahertz. The 32K single cycle SRAM implements bit banding that we'll cover later. The internal ROM is loaded with the TivaWare peripheral driver library, the bootloader, cryptography tables, and CRC error detection functionality. The 2K double EEPROM is WARE leveled to provide 500,000 program and erase cycles with a five-year data retention. Random access requires four clock cycles, while sequential access is single cycle for each location after the first. Note the figure on the lower right with flash memory starting out at zero, followed by ROM, SRAM, the bit banded alias of the SRAM, peripherals, and double EEPROM, followed by the bit banded alias of the peripherals, and finally some additional locations. The part is equipped with a battery backed hibernation module. This module provides internal and external power control with the use of an external voltage regulator. The hibernation module supplies a separate real-time clock and a battery power source. The VDD3ON mode retains the states of the external pins during hibernation to prevent errors or damage to external circuitry. Waking from hibernation can be done on a real-time clock match or by toggling the wake pin. 16 32-bit words of battery-backed SRAM are provided within the hibernation module. When configured for GPIO retention, hibernation current is 5 microamps. Without GPIO retention and with the real-time clock running, it is 1.7 microamps. Serial connectivity to the part is provided through a USB 2.0 on-the-go host device port, 8 UART ports, 6 I2C ports, 4 synchronous serial ports, and 2 CAN ports. There are two 1 mega sample per second 12-bit successive approximation analog to digital converters on the device. These two ADCs share 12 inputs and can make single-ended and differential measurements. 
There is an internal temperature sensor and four programmable sample sequencers. Flexible trigger control allows you to start a conversion sequence with software, the timers, the analog comparators, or with an external pin. Because of the device's low pin count, only the VDDA to ground A voltage reference is provided. There is optional hardware averaging, two analog, and 16 digital comparators. DMA support is provided. The device has as many as 43 GPIO, depending on which peripherals you choose to bring out to the pins. Any GPIO can be an external edge or level triggered interrupt and can directly initiate an ADC sample sequence or DMA transfer. The toggle rate can be as high as the CPU clock speed when using the advanced high performance bus. Inputs are 5 volt tolerant, with a few exceptions, and the drive strength of the outputs can be programmed to 2, 4, and 8 milliamps. The 8 milliamp setting provides slew rate control. All GPIO have programmable weak pull up, pull down, and open drain options. The memory protection unit, or MPU, provides up to 64 memory regions on the device that can be configured for access control. Incorrect access to one of these regions will generate a memory management fault. There are two watchdog timers with separate clocks in case one of them fails. A 24-bit SysTick high-speed general purpose or RTOS timer and six 32-bit and six 64-bit general purpose timers. The general purpose timers have PWM and capture and compare modes as well as daisy chaining. Timers can be configured to stall when the processor is halted by the debugger. A 32-channel DMA provides basic, ping-pong, and scatter-gather modes with two priority levels. Data sizes can be 8, 16, and 32 bits. The DMA is interrupt enabled. The nested vectored interrupt controller offers seven system level exceptions and 65 interrupts with eight programmable priority levels. The majority of the interrupts in the vector table can be reprogrammed to any of these eight priority levels. Asynchronous interrupt latency is reduced through the use of a feature called tail chaining. Response is deterministic. It is always 12 cycles or 6 cycles when tail chaining is used. System save and restoration is completely automatic. The device has two motion control modules. Each module has eight high resolution PWM outputs configured in four pairs. Deadband generators and hardware polarity control make it easy to drive H-bridge circuitry. Dedicated fault inputs allow low latency shutdown. System feedback is done using quadrature encoder inputs. The motion control modules can operate independently or they can be synchronized. The TM4C123GXL launchpad board has some impressive features for a small price. The onboard processor is a Texas Instruments Tiva C series TM4C 123G H6PM microcontroller. It's a member of the ARM Cortex M4F family with 64 pins and has a top speed of 80 MHz. The launch pad has two USB ports, one at the top for emulation and one on the left side as a on-the-go host and device user port. The board can be powered through either port using the power switch in the upper left. There are two user push buttons at the bottom of the board. The one on the right is also connected to the wake pin on the microcontroller that will wake it from hibernation mode. A reset button is provided in the emulator area of the board in the upper right. Just below the reset button is a tri-color LED that combines the red, green, and blue LEDs into a single package. To the right of the device USB port are two test points where you can measure the current draw of the microcontroller. They are currently connected by a jumper. There are two crystals on the board, a 16 MHz crystal that drives the main oscillator and a 32,768 Hz crystal that drives the real-time clock oscillator. Since many USB ports on computers 
can deviate significantly from 3.3 volts. An onboard voltage regulator is provided. Expandability is an important aspect of all TI's launchpad boards. The Tiva launchpad features the Booster Pack XL pinout, which offers additional signals while still supporting existing booster packs. All Tiva C series devices offer support for multiple integrated development environments or IDEs. Mentor Graphics, Mentor Embedded, Source Code Bench, IAR Systems Embedded Workbench, ARM, Kyle Microvision IDE, and Texas Instruments Code Composer Studio are all supported. Code Composer Studio or CCS will be our tool of choice in this workshop. In Lab 1, you'll obtain and install all the needed hardware and software, as well as test out the pre-installed application software on the Launchpad board. 